Hello all you awesome Power Appers, welcome to another video here at Power Apps Academy. My name is Barry and today we're going to be talking you through how to collect data using a more dynamic method of collecting data where you might say want to add a number of items which is an unknown amount but you want to give the user the ability to add a new row to collect different data. It might be you know placing an order you know and you don't know you want the flexibility to add a new row for each item that needs to be ordered. So um, traditionally, we might have uh, um, you know more static form screens, but uh, with this example, we're going to have a dynamic one. So have a row with uh, some fields that people can collect data, and then click on uh, add a new row to add a new item, and then save it back to a SharePoint list. So I'll give you a quick um, view of what the app that we're going to talk through today how it works and then uh, we're going to jump into the code itself. Uh, before we go over there just um, uh, our partners, a quick mention of our partners, our friends over at PowerAppify.com. You can get all your Power Apps templates really easy to uh, download, install and customize, fully documented. Uh, it tells you exactly how to install it and uh, how, it's, um, how to use it. So uh, yeah, those are, are, are designed to be easy for you to install and uh, at a really reasonable price as well. So head over to PowerAppify.com and check them out. Right, let's head over to uh, show you what we're going to be uh, developing today. Hey everyone, so this is our demo screen. This is the app. Um, you can see over here we've got... Uh, um, uh, basically this is a gallery with um, we're going to be using to present our form. We've clicked on this new order. So created this new row here. I'm going to add in an item. I'll just for ease of reference, we'll call it item one. We've got a cost for it. It's going to be 40 pounds. How many do we want to buy? Five calculates our total amount. We can add another item over here. We'll call this item two. Uh, we'll this is this one's 200 and 2367, just some random number. That's how many we're going to buy? 23, and then we'll do one more item for luck. Item three. Uh, this one's going to be 400, 344, and we're going to buy five of those. Okay. All right, so I've got three items there. I'm going to click on my Save button. This is going to go off to um, SharePoint. It's going to write it in my SharePoint list, and I've got a, a gallery over here referencing my SharePoint list. Um, so this is my SharePoint list that we've just uh, written to. It's fairly simple. I've got uh, title, which is a mandatory column, so I've just put a static value in there. These are the um, custom columns I've added, so item description, quantity, unit cost, and uh, row total cost. And that uh, matches uh, my gallery has disappeared. I've set it to disappear. Um, just quickly, this is how it works. We've got the gallery that we're using to collect the rows of data. The gallery uses a Power Apps collection, which is a table which uh, sits within the memory of your computer while you're using the app. Um, so it uses that collection just to create the empty row, and um, yeah, just just for the basically the working memory of the uh, of the gallery while we're using it. Um, and then once we hit the save button, it takes all the rows that are in the gallery that I've added, and then it writes it back to SharePoint, and then resets this collection and empties out the gallery. So that's um, that's what we're going to be developing today um, head over over back over here i'm going to open up uh this app before um we developed everything and we're going to talk through how to uh, i'm actually going to you know uh, configure everything with you guys so you can see exactly how i do it right just give me a second while i bring up the other screen and then we'll get right into it okay so uh here's our blank uh screen app that we're going to be working with um i'm just going to uh Right, so we're going to start off by inserting. No, okay, so um, we've got our SharePoint list at the back end. I mean, sorry, let me just actually open uh, open my SharePoint list quickly. So click on SharePoint. Okay. While that's, ha oh, that's loading in the background, I need to go into my app. So I've got my SharePoint list up created. I need to create a connector to that. So I'm just going to go to SharePoint. Uh, here we go. Click on the connector. Uh, it's in my SharePoint site somewhere, or maybe not. Where is it? Power App SharePoint site. And it's called Demo Table 
demo order items. Okay, that's the SharePoint list I've created. Let's just go into here quickly, I'll show you it. Uh, demo. Yeah, so this is the one I showed you when we we're just running through the app over there, and this is the one we're going to be using to save our items in there. You can see we've got three items in there. Just going to delete everything in there, the rows. Okay, so these are the ones I've added. One, two, three, four, four rows. They just uh, this one's a text row. These are uh, number 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 columns. Okay. Okay, so uh, we've got it in here. There it is. There. So we're going to go back over here. I'm going to insert a button. I'm going to use a button to initiate um, my uh, my form. Okay, so um, we are going to call this uh, new order. Okay. I'll rename that new order. And I do all my font sizes 11. Obviously, you can do whatever you want. So we've got the new order button there, and in there we're going to. Um, create a collection okay so we are going to do clear collect so a collection as I was explaining earlier um, is a basically a memory a, a table that sits in the memory of your app that you can use for you know uh, local calculations and saving data locally once you've finished using the table you can write the contents out um, to uh, a SharePoint list and that uh, that makes the data persistent so you can access it when you next time you if you close your app and open again the data will still be there so clear collect basically uh, the clear in front of the collect means open a fresh collection so it'll if there was data in there before it'll just refresh it um, I'm going to call my collection I start my collection name everything I always call it col underscore and then I'm going to call it order items okay and then um, I'll put a comma and then uh, now the I want to create specific columns within my collection. So these are st uh, static column columns that I'm creating uh, with these names. So I'm going to call one item uh, description uh, item description, and I'm going to put it with a null string. So just an empty string in there. So it's just going to be a blank uh, blank uh, column in in my table, and I'm going to do one for uh, order quantity same thing gonna fill that up with a blank string and then unit cost same thing unit cost blank string and a uh, uh, row uh, total cost and that is also going to be a blank string so this you know this is just the format I don't put a comment a comma on the last one you can see there close the squiggly brackets and then just close off my brackets at the end, okay? And then just end the semicolon like that. Okay, so that creates my my table in the memory, and there's those rows in the table. Let me just show you quickly. If I go up here, let me play on that. If I click on that button, I'll show you the actual table that's been created. If I just click on this variables button over here, in my collection, there we go, if I right click on there, View table. There we go. So these are the. This is the table I've created in my memory, and these are the the columns in my table. And you can see there's empty because there's nothing in it. So the reason I need that is because uh, to create uh, when I open a gallery, I have to have a source of that gallery. I'm going to use this collection as the source of the gallery, and then I'm going to add an empty row, and that's going to be the the first row that's there for someone to fill in. Otherwise, I wouldn't have a row. I'll just have an empty gallery with nothing in it wouldn't be very helpful okay so now we need to fill in the the gallery part that we're going to use now I always use um, containers containers give a lot of flexibility within a screen so if you've got different elements in your screen just put a container in at first and then put all your fields in that container it helps you like if you want to like um, make everything disappear instead of going and doing all the different rows and everything you can or all the different fields you can just make the whole container disappear so if everything's logically grouped just put it in a container that's what i do so um there's my container i'm going to bring it down here stretch it across a little bit over there let's say like that and i'm going to call this container um order item container so always start with c-o-n-t and then um order item 
container. Right, so that's my container name. Uh, I've got my container there. So within my container, um, I want to have a gallery. So we're going to put a vertical gallery in my container. So there's my gallery. Um, I want my gallery to uh, connect to my collection that I've created in the memory, the order items that we've just created over there. Now it'll default to this layout, uh, image title and subtitle. I mean, that's just a default. I just delete everything in there because we're going to add our own fields in there. That's the great thing about galleries is you can just add in your own items. I'm just going to delete all those fields in there. Okay. So now what do we want to put in there, right? So we want, um, we want, the, we want to capture data. Okay. So we want some text boxes, text input boxes in there with, um, and we're going to point them to the fields, right? So first one we want is a description. So we go for um, text input. Make sure this gallery is selected because if it's outside the gallery, it, uh, you, know, you, you might be able to move it over, but you won't be able to use some of the functions that are built within the gallery. So just be careful when you add in a text box. Just highlight the gallery first, then add the text box in there, right? So that's going to be our description one. Make everything 11 in there. Um, I'll do the height of these to say 35. Okay, so there's my description box. Um, I'm going to copy and paste this because uh, we have the quantity. Okay, we've got the the cost. So we're going to have one that's the cost. Paste another one that is uh, quantity, and then total. So let's put that one cost, quantity, and control C, control V to copy and paste, total. So we're gonna, I'm just gonna move this a little bit over like this. Move that a little bit over, just cause I wanna move this a little tad over. Just cause I wanna put, um, I'm just gonna put a, just highlight this cause I wanna put a little dollar sign because we're talking about cash. So I'm just gonna put a uh, text label in here and make that a little bit smaller. I'm gonna put it over there. Cause we've got a back background. I just need to make sure my writing is white. Okay, and then I am going to put a dollar sign in there. Cause we're talking about money. There we go, money. And I'm going to control C and control V this because we're going to talk about money here as well. Okay, so what have we got here? We've got a gallery that I'm designing with some fields in it. Okay, and um, like how do we know what those fields are? Uh, I'm going to put uh, some just outside, I'm not outside of the gallery, I'm on the container. I want to put in some text labels just so we know what that is. We're going to put some text labels. And this is to tell us what each of those fields are that we're filling in. Okay, so this one's going to be um, item description. Oh, color. I'm going to make this yellow because it's a header. So we've got item description. I'm going to make it uh, 11 as well. And I have got unit cost. Control C V. So. This next one is unit cost. So unit cost. Um, let's try and make it so that unit cost. Control C, Control V. This one is going to be quantity. Quant quantity, and then the next one is going to be. Uh, total for that row. So control C and V. So now I know what each of the input items are without having to, if I put these in the actual gallery, each time the row would um, appear, it would have the same head heading. So it would look a bit untidy. That's why I'm putting it uh, over here. Quantity spelled incorrect. Right, and then total. Okay, cool. So um, I'm just going to shift everything over that way a bit. Um, and I'm going to move. This is a nice thing about the gallery. Is that I could, sorry, the 
container is I can just move the whole container over. And I'm going to make that a little bit wider because I'm going to put some things in there, some um, little buttons in there. So, um, what do we want? Again, within the gallery in the top row, make sure it's highlighted. I'm going to put a button in there. And in that button, it's going to be like a new row. Oops. Okay. Um, add row, something like that. Add row. Uh, we want that to be 11. Add row. Add row. Okay. That seems to be, let's make it a bit smaller so that fits in there. Add row. It's a bit untidy for now, but uh, we'll fix it up later. Add row. And then we want a trash can just to delete the row as well. If you want to show you how to do that. So we've got a little trash can there. So let's make that, put that over there. And we want to make that white. Cool. All right. So we want to also get rid of um, these text inputs over there because that we don't need this is just text and actually um, just delete those and delete that one and with these ones because there are numbers as well so I'm just gonna hold I can hold and shift when I click on them I'm gonna change these from text to numbers okay cool so it's starting to look something like what we want um, so we've got this little line over here, um, that's just a separator. I'm going to make that a one just so it's really skinny like that. And I can bring that up a little bit. Okay, so um, we've got that. I can also highlight, sorry, I'm just back in this sort of uh, cell within my gallery. And I want to uh, have a border just to make it look nice. And I'll make that white. Okay, cool. So... Um, so here's my gallery. Uh, here's my header. Actually, I want. Uh, I'm just gonna bring. I'm just gonna control A for everything inside my uh, container. I want to make my container fit that exactly on the sides. Okay, cool. Now within my container, I want to have a header. So I'm just gonna go insert text label. So I've got a label there. I'm just gonna drag that all the way across to the other side and I'm going to go up this is going to be my header so what are we going to put this new order form or something like that new order form uh, don't forget it's because I've got a black background I just need to make the writing, the writing white and I want to make it size 11 and I also want to put it in the middle so there we go and I can also change the color of the back because it's a header um, we can make it uh, so if we go to color this is the fill so we go over there new order form cool and let me just select the container because we want the border of the container to be one and we want that to be white as well just to make it look nice okay so we've got something that resembles a little form there um, cool now, um, this gallery, remember, we've selected it to go to call order items. And the reason this row appears empty is because, remember, in here, we created uh, so a, a row in basically an empty table there. So because there's an empty table there, this row appears. If it, there wasn't that empty, uh, empty, row, empty columns in there, these wouldn't appear, okay? So that's why it's important to have that in there. Okay, so what are we going to do next? Okay, so the next thing uh, to do is um, we want to uh, basically when we fill everything in a row and we click add row, we want a new row to appear underneath it. Okay, so there's a bit of um, code that we have to add on the row. So I'm just going to get that out. Sorry, one second. Um, uh, here we go. Okay, so 
Right, so in here we have to go on select. We're going to remove what uh, just defaults the select parent, right? And we're going to go, um, we want to patch. So when you collect on, click on this button, it wants to take everything that we've written in those fields, write it back to the collection, and then add a new empty row in there. Okay, and that's going to, um, that's what gives us the effect to be able to add new rows and collect data within there. Okay, so this is how it works. So we're going to go patch. Now make, make sure that you added the button within the gallery, because if the button's outside the gallery, it looks it might look like it's inside the gallery, but you'll you won't be able to use like the this item because it has to be sort um, added from within the gallery. So I've, it's caught me out before, so just be aware of that. So we want to patch. Where do we want to patch to? Our new collection that we've made, which is order items. Okay, and we want to patch this item which is this whatever um, row that we're on, that the button's on. That's how the gallery works. So it's, there's obviously there's lots of rows. It, whenever you click on the button, it's this item means whatever row is selected on there. Okay, this item, and we get our formatting nice. Uh, we will open with the squiggly brackets because we want to write into our, uh, our gallery. And what do we want to do? The same, um, rows that we created so item description okay and what do we want to put in item description oh the one thing we forgot to do guys is we forgot to label these so we know what we're doing so this one is let's just call it rename txt underscore item item description and this one we're going to call um, rename txt underscore uh, unit cost okay and then see I need to rename the ones that I absolutely need to rename because I need to call them at some point and this one is going to be txt underscore um, quantity and one more uh, uh, this one's going to be uh, txt underscore uh, total cost Okay, so now I know what my items are called. Let me go back to this button where we left off. So our item description, so we want to patch to our item description uh, column in our table in memory. We want to take this value in here, okay, which is txt underscore item description dot text. So the text that's in there, that's what we want to patch, comma. Right, next row. Uh, we want to do... Um, item uh, what was this next one called uh, order quantity was it order quantity same uh, txt underscore quantity dot text cool uh, next is unit cost I think unit cost and that one is txt underscore um, unit cost dot text so we want to patch whatever's into that one text and then the last one is um, row total cost and the, the number we want to put in there is within this text box total cost okay no comma at the end remember close that squiggly bracket off close the other bracket off and uh, semicolon to end that right so now we've written whatever's in this row and then we need to create a new row and to do that we're just going to copy exactly what we put in our button because we want another blank row uh, but we don't want the clear collect because remember what I said beginning clear collect clears the whole um, collection so it'll delete whatever's put in there if you just use collect then that just uh, just adds to the collection okay so we want to add a row don't want to delete the whole collection or refresh the whole collection okay cool so there we have it we've got the is it working what is going on here there's an error title it's just I think it's just something we need to delete let's just delete that okay all right cool let us test this so I'm gonna play here so we're gonna go item 
11 unit cost, 12, 3. Oh, it's not calculating this. I will get that to calculate. Add row. Okay, so you can see it's added a row, but this one's blanked out. Okay, so let's try and figure out what's going on here. Okay, I think it's because our de you see this default value? We want the default value of, of this item to always be whatever this item is. Okay, so th this is the nice thing about being in the gallery. This item, um, let me just show you. This item got description. Th these are all the columns that we have in our table. So we want the default vo vo value of this text box always to be whatever's in this row in the column to be this item dot item description yes this one we want this item uh, dot, dot, what is this item cost unit cost this one we want uh, default this item dot quantity and this one we want this item this item dot total cost of the row okay there's nothing in there because we didn't we didn't do something so we what do we want this to be right we want it to be this times this okay so all we have to go in for this value um, I think it is uh, text 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 um, I don't know if you are yes uh, what am I doing default um, sorry one second let me just try and work out where I've added this number in default okay so this one I think default we're not gonna we're just gonna go uh, we're not gonna reference the the value in the table we're actually just going to add these the, we're going to do the calculation okay and that's what this one's going to be so it is going to be text unit cost we want the unit cost one text unit cost uh, dot text dot text the text value of that multiplied by quantity txt underscore quantity dot text okay so there we go that calculates it that's fine because just remember when we when we write back when we save this to the SharePoint list it's not shapes it's not saving from the collection the collection is just giving us the ability to add these blank rows okay but it's taking everything that will be in this gallery and it's writing that back to SharePoint. So the collection is used for adding these blank rows. The actual data has been written back to um, to the SharePoint list. So that's how this is going to work. Okay, so let's see where we're at. And actually, just to make it easier, um, so every time I save, you should see some items come into this SharePoint list. Have I saved anything yet? I oh, know we haven't saved. We're, we're saving everything to the collection for now. Um, right, let's just quickly play this and let's add an item 22. Let's do a you know, 55 times 67. There we go. Add one more row for luck. Item 33. This one's going to be whatever. Okay, so we've got the three items in our gallery there. Um, each time I click on this, it saves it back to actually saves that row back to um, the uh, the table in memory, and then creates a new blank row. Because this one I filled up, but I haven't added row. It only it'll if I look at the collection, it'll only have the top two in. I, only until I click this one, then that will save that row to the gallery. Okay. Let me just show you what I mean. Uh, let's go back into here and go into collections, view table. Okay, so it's got the three in there. It doesn't have the total row cost because I'm not saving that. That's just a calculation in the box. That doesn't matter because, as I said, we're only actually saving the values that are in the gallery, not in the collection. 
collections only used to uh, make this blank row for this in this case okay and then um, let's just add in a um, let's let's insert a gallery just so we can see what's actually in our table so we'll add a, uh, um, a blank vertical gallery uh, let's connect it to our order this is the SharePoint list that we are creating so I've connected it to that SharePoint list I'm just gonna um, make this a bit smaller over here and in this gallery what are we going to do add an item connect to data sorry I, I didn't actually want to create a blank one I'm going to insert gallery just a normal gallery uh, vertical gallery there we go we want to connect it to our order items you can see that this way it creates the rows for me which is what I want so it always defaults to that three three um, view layout of image title and subtitle but um, we we can change that let's say we only want title and subtitle we don't want the image and we want it to be white oh no sorry we want those the rows in there to be white just so we can see them because we've got a black background what okay and we want to um, let's go back on that we want these the fields to be um, don't want to be item description at the top and then maybe um, I don't know total cost just so we know what we're doing there we go there's nothing in that gallery that's why it's blank okay so we can see when we hit on our save button over here and we do write that back um, we'll see that that will start to populate so this is just to give us a visual of our our um, SharePoint list right so now what are we going to do we've got all the data here within our gallery we want to write this when people are ready to save it back to SharePoint list back to our SharePoint list over here so in order to do that we need to um, have a save button so we've got our save button over here we've got our save button over here and we're going to put some code in there right so we're going to use a for all loop so basically uh, for all um, is a function within there that loops through every item so because we've got different rows here in our gallery we're going to use the for all to loop through every row in the gallery so for all right just get our formatting nicely our gallery which is gallery one we can actually I think it's gallery one let's just double check gallery one let's just rename that to gal for gallery order items so we know which one we're doing go back to this button over here gallery it should have renamed it but it didn't um, so gal underscore order items okay and all, all items so for for all the items in our gallery okay we want to use dot all items uh, comma we want to patch hopefully everyone knows what patches patches um, whenever you want to write back to something use the patch I think we used patch already for um, patching into our collection but we can use exactly the same command to patch to SharePoint so if we want to write to anything we always use patch so we want to use our um, table order items this is our connection to the SharePoint list it gives us this table over here and when we want to create new ro rows within the SharePoint list, we always use defaults, okay? Always use defaults when to write new rows. If you want to update rows, then you don't use defaults. But we want to add append rows to our table, okay? And it's the same table that we want to use defaults on, okay? And then we want to write, what do we want to write? We want to write exactly like we did to our collection, but this time to SharePoint list. So 
for the title. The title you always have to write something in there. So um, I'll just keep it a static string to the title. So title, I'm just going to put uh, order orders or something like that. Doesn't really matter. Okay, next is going to be item description. Um, I can just start typing what the columns are. It'll present them with what they are in my SharePoint list. So these all all these the black um, text here is, is each column that, uh, in my SharePoint list. So item description. Uh, what is this? Now I'm going to go back to my text. Um, sorry, not in quotes. Text box values. Text uh, item description dot text. That's one. Next is a unit cost, and that is text underscore uh, unit cost dot text. And the next one is um, quantity, and that's text underscore quantity dot text. And the last one is row total cost, and that is txt underscore, um, what is that? Total cost dot text. Cool. Uh, we want to close that off. And we want to close off the brackets. We always want to get the right number of brackets. Cool. We have some sort of problem. Okay, so where it's got you, uh, it's saying that because remember when I created my SharePoint list, these are number columns, right? If we go to edit, you can see they are type number. So um, because these are set as type, if I click on here, what is it? Oh, that's a number, number, number. So they are number. There is a... Um, there is a function which can make sure that you write it in the same format. Like if it's value is for a number value or if it's text, it's for text value. So we want to make sure that when it's writing these ones, because it's text by default, let's just, we can just put a value wrapper around that and that will make sure it's written as a number format. I'm going to do that for each of these. Value, hopefully that fixes it. Let's just have a look. Value. Oh, value. Is that going to fix it? No, something else. Um, item description dot text. Um, I'm just going to pause this one second while I. Is that fixed? No, just while I investigate this, I'll be right back. Okay, I found the problem. Um, I had I was actually putting this code in the um, in the uh, display mode property, which wasn't uh, obviously it wasn't going to work there. So I've just copied it into the on select property, is where it should be, which is uh, resolved that. So silly mistakes, but I didn't want to waste the time in the video troubleshooting, but uh, it didn't take me long. Okay, so. So here we are, um, we have the text over here, which is going to write whatever we have in our gallery here back to our SharePoint list. And then we want to um, basically update our connector to SharePoint so that um, we can see whatever we write back in our gallery that we put on the right hand side. So um, to do that, we just use refresh, refresh. Okay, and our connector name is table underscore demo order items. Okay, that's what that does. Right, and do we want to put a notification just um, to say that um, it's written? Let's put that up at the front here. So we'll go notify. That's going to put a little message on the screen. Data successfully written to SharePoint. Okay, and we're going to close that and we want to put it as a notification type um, success and we want it to be for four seconds or 4,000 milliseconds. Close that off. Brackets over there. Okay, cool. So, if this works, this should 
take all our values in here, including the zero one that we didn't want, and we'll show you how to delete that and write it back to SharePoint. Let's have a look. There we go. So we can see our items, item 11, 12, and 33, and a blank one as well, which we didn't actually want. That's all written to SharePoint, so we know that that's working. Um, right, what do we want to do now let's we want to we want to have a way that we can delete um, delete the rows that we don't want okay so how are we going to do that we've got that little dustbin icon um, so we want to go um, on select on there and I hit on this dustbin so we don't want to select parent we want remove function um, in our collection that we created okay we want and this item so whatever row that we're clicking on this item we want to remove it cool so um, got that let's test it out okay that removes it there and we want to wait let's just add in a quick button so we can um, just outside of my container let's go button oh my mouse just died for a second button we just want to use this to refresh our um, fresh gallery okay that didn't do what I wanted it to do refresh gallery fresh gallery there you go Okay, click on that and we want to on select we want to reset our gallery which is this one connected to our table demo order items mm, is that what we want just check that out okay. uh, sorry not reset we want to refresh Refresh. All right, let's try that out. See what happens. Refresh. Cool. Now I just want to show you. I'm going to go in here because we, we've got that empty row in there. We don't really want that in there. And we're just going to select all of these. Delete. Delete all the rows in there. Come back to our app. Refresh. Okay. So you can see everything's gone over there. Now we've only got the three rows that we want to write. Let's save those. There we go, we've got the three rows, we've got our message coming up. There we have it. Um, we could just make this a little bit um, tidier. Uh, we didn't want um, the item, we wanted the item 11 at the top. So let's just put this as item description, item description, and this one total cost, row total cost. There we go. And we could, you know, just neaten this up a little bit by going the same size as everything else. And we could make them smaller and move this up there. Put a dollar dollar sign in front of it, you know, all that kind of thing. Um, make that really small one. Bring it up. Whoop. Come on. Come on, bring it up, delete that, put a head on it, all that kind of thing. You know, we're not going to, we're not going to do that. Cool. All right, everyone. So hopefully um, that all made sense. What did we learn today? We learned how to, you know, add these rows in here. Um, add, you can add, I could add as many as I wanted, right? By just clicking on this and that's the key here. We can just add row, add row, add row. And um, I think it's because my, uh, yeah, there we go. I've made that a little bit small, but I can then go down. You know, you can just keep adding to infinity and uh, you can write once you've completed all of those, click on the save button, write it back to SharePoint, and then you get all your things added in here. All right, and you can go back down and check here. Now there's lots of other stuff where we can do here where we can say, well, 
if this if one of these are blank then you know disable this button or don't allow you to click a new row or whatever there's all sorts of uh, fancy things but that's for another time so this is a really great skill to have a um, bit of knowledge to be able to advance your apps so hopefully you found that useful guys i'm going to put a you know, buy me a coffee link it really helps this channel uh, if you can support that or you know subscribe and like this video really much appreciate that very much otherwise have a fantastic day and we'll speak to you all soon bye for now